this administration, let me just get my sentence out. This administration has treated this entire tragedy with the utmost seriousness to get to the bottom of the attacks, hold the perpetrators accountable, and make sure that it never happens again. You'd think the loss of four American lives would bring about a quick and decisive response. Has the United States lost its status? Are we a paper tiger? Retired Lieutenant General and Fox News military analyst Tom McInerney joins us this evening. Good evening. Thank you, Judge. Well, it's good to have you here. I want to ask you one question. What are the rules of engagement? If we are looking to get justice and we're going to get to the bottom of this, why are we sending the FBI in three weeks later, maybe? Because we want to stall it through November 6th. This was an act of war against the United States. The FBI should not be involved, Judge. Uh, you know that. And, and the facts are that if it went into the military chain, we would know when two days later what happened. And by the way, we should have already attacked those people. We know where they are. We know who they are. Why do you say that? Well, I, I know that we had a uh, predator drone over at the very end of the exercise. They obviously have certain forensic things that I don't particularly want to talk a great deal about. Mm -hmm. uh, but they've got their name in space. Okay, let's not kill ourselves. Why? So kill why ourselves. would the administration not address the murder, the violent murder of these four? And they had asked for help. They had asked for security. Judge, I don't know that. Uh, uh, why they haven't. I mean, it should have been immediately. This was a terrorist attack by radical Islamists, the Al-Qaeda in the Maghreb. The fact is, it's that simple. What they went through an elaborate cover-up process to draw this out, and I believe that it was purely to give time to their political process. They have politicized it. We knew right away that first night what happened. They were talking to the, the Tactical Operations Center was talking to uh, Tripoli, the embassy. They were talking to AFRICOM headquarters in Germany, and they were talking to the State Department. And I can assure you they were not telling them that this was a spontaneous uh, uprising and people film. coming along and because of a film. But, 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 General, let me ask you this. Does this infuriate you? When people lie to me, it makes me crazy. Well, it infuriates me because where's our intelligent leadership? Where's our military? The intelligence community is being thrown under the bus and they knew what it was right away. Uh, people are standing by watching. We've got very senior people that are not breaking this open and they ought to break it open. You know what I think, General, and, and, and stay with me, General, I think that the whistleblowers right now are in a huddle. But uh, joining the General uh, is former commander of the USS Cole, Kurt Lippo from D.C., and Gary Bernstein, former CIA officer who led the U.S. response to the East African Embassy bombings in 1998. He's in Florida, and journalist and Middle East expert, author of the book, They Must Be Stopped, Why We Must Defeat Radical Islam and How to Do It, Brigitte Gabriel. All right, um, I'm going to start with you, uh, Kirk, and certainly Gary, join in. What is your reaction to the intelligence, not just the intelligence, but the sworn testimony under oath that we're hearing that this administration lied to us, not once, but over and over? Uh, I'm absolutely stunned, and I agree, Judge, with the general in that this is nothing more than a delaying tactic, hoping that the American people will put this aside, cast a degree of doubt on the whole situation, and that they can get through the election. The parallels between this case and USS Cole are absolutely striking in that we were hit one month before an election. This attack on the embassy was two months before an election. The Clinton administration delayed. The Obama administration is delaying, and they're just hoping to get through it. They don't care about sworn testimony. They're but, willing but, but to take the heat for political purposes. Kirk, Kirk, let me ask you this. You know, you say it's about an election, and, and I'm trying to establish a motivation here, but, but wouldn't the American people say, go get them, they killed our people, and we keep giving them aid without any kind of restriction? The Obama administration in this thing, just like the Clinton administration, does not care about what the American people think of this incident. Okay. They care about power and, and them getting reelected. Uh, I don't mean to write. Gary Bernstein, uh, you were involved in securing an embassy. Talk to me about what you do. Of course, in East Africa in 1998, after the attacks, we deployed after two hours when we learned that that embassy was attacked, 
We deployed. The decision was made by Jeff O'Connell, the chief of the counterterrorism center. We moved to an aircraft. We loaded it. We were on the ground in East Africa within 26 hours. That's okay. It so you're on the ground after there was an incredible terrorist attack. What do you attribute? Double bombings of two embassies. It's about leadership. In this particular case, I saw the Department of State, and I, and I heard testimony that said that the, the rationale that we were not on the ground in Benghazi after 17 days because they couldn't get visas, uh, it's which embarrassing. is insanity, which is insanity. They should have gotten people on planes, both the agency the, the, and the FBI, and similarly, they should have had military people there moving there to aid that embassy that was under attack, that is sovereign U.S. territory, in an area that was sort of, uh, you know, weakly controlled by the government. And, and even if it's a diplomatic problem, you move to save your people first. We can worry about diplomatic niceties later. We can smooth well, that over. That we have to save and that. rescue our people. I, Gary, I absolutely agree with you. I want to bring Brigitte in for a second. Brigitte, look, we knew that al-Qaeda in the Maghreb, in northern Africa, you know, was not just um, a, a recruiting. I mean, they were about to be operational. We knew that. Why do you think that the, this administration is ignoring the reality of what their intelligence community has told them? Because this administration administration wanted to sell the American public on the idea that Al-Qaeda is no longer a threat. We killed Osama bin Laden. We solved the war on terror. It is over. Look at all the changes that I promised you, which I brought to you, and therefore now you can sleep at peace. The administration was purposely deceiving the American public and driving us into sleep How again. How strong is Al-Qaeda now? Al-Qaeda is rising and it's strong. It is strong and it, it's coming, making a comeback in Iraq. It's strong in Yemen, in Al Maghrib, in North Africa, Somalia, Nigeria, Mali, the Balkans. All right, General, should there be an, an engagement by the United States? We, we ought to covertly take out these threats. And Brigitte's spot on. It's not only Al-Qaeda, it's Muslim Brotherhood, etc. All right, General McInerney, Commander Lippold, Gary Bernstein, Bridget Gabriel, thank you so much for being with us this evening.